The longer Ray 5 laser engraver. A 10 watt diode laser engraver and cutter boasting some interesting features at a very reasonable price. Let's take a look. So to get this out of the way, yes, this machine was sent to me to test and review. However, my opinions are my own and I set out to test this machine in a setting to be accurate to how I would use it in my shop. Once I opened the box, the assembly was pretty straightforward and didn't take long. The unit came with all the necessary tools for assembly as well as protective glasses and some test material. The instructions that came with it were brief but sufficient, although there are assembly videos that go more in depth on the process. One thing that wasn't abundantly clear in the given instructions was this eccentric nut on the head assembly to adjust the amount of slop when mounting the head to the carriage. The first thing I did once the machine was assembled was to add reference stops to a piece of plywood that I would be using as a spoil board. The unit comes with brackets to screw down the machine to a work surface, but I used small blocks of wood and CA glue with accelerator to speed up the process. I plugged in the machine and hooked it up to the computer using a USB connection, but also connected the laser to my Wi-Fi, which is a feature to note. With the computer connected, I set up the machine in Lightburn, a paid software, but well worth the small investment. The Ray 5 is also compatible with free software like Laser Gerbil, but if you are getting into laser work, if you're like me, you'll appreciate Lightburn for its power. A feature of the longer Ray 5 is its touch screen for basic controls like moving the head in the X and Y directions and loading and engraving files from a TF card without the use of a computer. I don't really see myself using this feature as I have big clunky hands and like to have more advanced controls using software at my disposal. I mentioned the compatibility with the Lightburn software and the Wi-Fi connectivity of the Ray 5. I was slightly disappointed to find out that to control the machine via Wi-Fi, you need to connect the laser to Longer's web user interface, which gives you the same basic controls as the touchscreen by entering an IP address. Then you would take the G-code files you exported from Lightburn and upload the G-code to the web interface to send the code to the laser. I'm not sure if that's a light burn or a longer issue, but it's worth noting if that's a feature that you were looking at. To start testing, I grabbed a piece of Eastern Red Cedar to engrave and set the focal height of the laser module using the included spacer block. I really like the two thumb screws to lock in the focal distance of the laser. I have used other lasers that had a thumb screw system that would shake loose during the runtime and not hold the module firmly. This one stays where you lock it in. Something I'm not crazy about is where you position the setup block, on the back side of the laser. It's out of the way and cumbersome to get around the eye shield and under the Y-axis control rod to place the block. This machine boasts a 10,000 mm per minute max speed and a 0.06 mm square focus laser dot size. I didn't physically measure the laser dot, but I will say it seems visibly more narrow than other lasers I've used, which is a nice feature. With the machine working as it should and mounted to my spoil board, I decided to make a grid pattern of the work area using the machine itself to help with positioning materials under the laser module. To test the power, I took a piece of 6mm white oak and made a test file to cut at 250mm per minute at 100% in one pass. Success. This is also a good time to note that I am testing this machine without the use of air assist or a honeycomb grid. I am using this machine out of the box with no added accessories. To see how fine the laser spot was, I did a test engrave using the outline of text and the result was crisp and clean. I have been working on some projects using Eastern Red Cedar I milled a while ago and I try to use every bit of material I can so out of the scraps I have been making aromatic cedar drawer and closet sachets using hand plane shavings to sell. I found these muslin sachet bags and wanted to note the contents so I tried laser engraving them. The first attempt was a failure, I burned right through the delicate material. New plan. I thought I'd try making a stamp out of a poplar block. While the stamp could use some refinement on my end, I think it turned out well and is absolutely a viable solution. I wanted the bags to look like something you'd find in an old general store. Bags marked with the contents like flour and sugar. Imperfect and timeless. I'm happy with the result of the stamp, but I wanted to try burning the bag itself again. This time I used a piece of scrap wood as a backing in between the layers of muslin. 
I adjusted my settings to be not as aggressive, and I really, really love how these turned out. Here's the laser engraved bag, and here is the stamped bag. I really love the idea of engraved leather. I've been making leather bookmarks for a while and wanted to see if laser cutting them would be more efficient. Ultimately, I think the engravings look awesome, but I think it's faster using traditional methods to cut the leather blanks due to leather's organic nature and the color density and thickness difference between different leathers. A very practical application of this machine is making labels. I make my own food safe wood finish for cutting boards and utensils and always like to keep my brand identity cohesive. I make these labels out of 30 point chipboard to fit under the ring of regular mouth canning jars. On this machine and the size of chipboard I use, I can get a batch of 12 at a time from one sheet of chipboard relatively quickly, which is nice, and once I have the file loaded, I can operate the process at the machine without the use of a computer. I also tried engraving some graphics on aluminum, which did well, though I will take time to dial in the design file and the speed and power settings. I really do love the wireless connectivity of the machine so I can work on my main computer while the laser is working across the office without having a long USB cord to deal with. I also did a test cutting out small pieces of wood that might be more problematic using bigger wood shop equipment. The test started at 250 millimeters per minute and went up to 1000 millimeters per minute at 100% power. Probably my favorite experiment was engraving these US patent illustrations on heavyweight art paper. The result was really high end and nicer than any sort of print and shows texture both in the engraving and the paper itself. So what do I think about this laser? I really love the footprint and working area covering 90% of what I would want to cut or engrave while fitting nicely on a desktop. The touchscreen is nice, though I personally don't see me using it much. The laser spot is narrow and precise and leaves a fine engraving. The price point is attractive coming in under $500 at the time of this video, although I failed to find a port to attach an aftermarket rotary attachment to expand the capabilities of the machine which should be taken into account. Overall, I think it's a solid machine and did everything I asked of it and should be considered a contender, especially taking into account the fine laser spot which gives it an edge over the competition as well as the price. Have you thought about adding a laser engraver to your workshop? Let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to include any discounts or affiliate links in the description if you want to help support the channel. As always, thanks for watching.